Recently, I decided to take a deeper hike into the woods. A need for adventure is what prompted this spontaneous trek, and it led me straight to a female downy woodpecker. Curiously, she was digging out a hole into a lone tree. With it being winter, it couldn't be for nesting, so what was she doing? Well, digging out a place to roost for the night. That is how downy woodpeckers protect themselves from the frigid winds and temperatures over those long winter nights, and they are no dummy when it comes to making sure that their roosting site is super secure and warm. They take into account all kinds of things, like the direction of the wind, precipitation, and predators. It's usually dug out in a dead tree trunk or branch, with the entrance into the cavity being around one and a half inches in diameter resulting in a nearly perfectly round hole. They are crafty too, making sure to create a cavity that is not too large for most predators to get in, therefore cutting down the possibility of trouble. Even the tree itself they choose to create a roost in is usually not too close to other trees that predators could climb and jump from. Unlike their nesting cavities, ones used for roosting aren't as deep and can be just 4 inches down into the tree. Downy woodpeckers measure around 6 inches in length, so it's a tight space, which is thought to help with keeping them warm. When constructing their roosting hole, the direction the entrance faces is often taken into consideration, with them picking a place on the tree that is facing away from prevailing winds. Even more impressive, though, is the fact that it's not always the direction the entrance faces that matters the most, but how much the tree or branch itself leans. They nearly always choose the underside of a tilted tree or branch to dig out a cavity. The reason for this is that the underside of a leaning tree is much better protected from wind and precipitation. The downy eyewitness was using a tree with a bit of a tilt. Not a super huge lean, but a lean nonetheless. Here in winter, the direction of the prevailing winds are west. The hole she made was pointed north. By creating a hole either facing away from prevailing winds or on the underside of a leaning tree, the interior won't get as cold. In fact, it can be 18 degrees or more warmer than the outside air. This is also where the reason for the tight hollow makes sense. As a downy roost, much of the heat generated by the bird throughout the night remains inside the tight cavity. This is a factor for why the chamber is so much warmer than the surrounding air outside. Having a snug place to rest overnight makes a world of difference. A bird that doesn't have to fight as much to keep warm throughout a winter's night uses less energy and therefore has a better chance of living to see the light of another day. It's my understanding that birds that roost in cavities have a better chance of survival. The timing of me seeing this downy woodpecker making a new roosting spot was just before a really, really cold snap. It causes me to wonder if she was preparing for this. Perhaps her other roosting spots weren't as sufficient. Danny woodpeckers don't share their roosting hole either. No matter how cold, they spend the night alone. For other woodpeckers, like northern flickers, they will share a roosting spot with another flicker. And some other birds, like bluebirds, have been seen roosting with at least a dozen other bluebirds. Incredibly, one time, nearly 30 white-breasted nuthatches were spotted piling into one nighttime roost, and something like 46 winter wrens were seen going into the same winter roosting cavity. I would have loved to have seen that. With downy woodpeckers, or just any woodpecker species in general, they normally create all the roosting cavities that they will need for winter over late summer and fall. Sometimes, though, they have to dig out new ones in the dead of the season. There could be a number of reasons why that was the case for the downy that I saw, such as being taken over by another animal or larger woodpecker, maybe even another downy, or the roosting hole she had could have gotten destroyed by high winds or even humans. I also wonder if this little downy could be young and inexperienced. Whatever the case, it can't be downplayed for how important it is that we preserve trees and habitats. Elimination of not only live trees, but more importantly dead or dying ones, can have devastating impact on the population of all cavity nesting birds. Most cavity nesters also roost in tree cavities. Leaving rotting trees up so long as it's safe to do so is a very good thing, and will help a precious cavity roosting bird like a downy woodpecker have a shot at another day doing all the oh-so-important things that downy woodpeckers do best.
ridding trees of pesky wood boring larvae and therefore playing its critical role in maintaining a stable ecosystem where trees can thrive. On the opposite side of the spectrum, the much larger and another super important woodpecker, the pileated, is full of all kinds of fun behavior too. Learn all about that plus more in this full overview on the prehistoric looking bird. Thanks for watching. Happy birding! Made it pairs stay together all year long. During fall and winter, though, the pair will roost in different locations overnight.